Now let's move on into vectors and scalar. Essentially, we're going to be talking about a lot of physical quantities in this class. Some are going to be what we call scalars, and some are going to be what we call vectors. The big difference between them is a scalar quantity is simply a single number. A vector quantity has both a magnitude, or a number if you will, as well as a direction associated with it. Let me give you an example. I can tell you that my speed, a scalar quantity, might be 50 miles per hour. A vector quantity has more information associated with it. It has a number, maybe 50 miles per hour, and it has the direction, so 50 miles per hour north, contains a lot more information than the scalar quantity. Now, vectors in, this, in the book are going to be written both bold as well as a little arrow right on top of them. So, you know, you might see me write, you know, speed, just like that. When we write the magnitude or the number associated with a vector, then what we're going to do is it's not going to have the arrow, it's not going to have the bold, and it may very often be written as such. So the magnitude of A putting kind of absolute value bars across it. Suppose I wanted to take the magnitude of my 50 miles per hour north, that's simply going to be equal to 50 miles per hour. To make use of vectors, uh, what we typically do is we typically tend to draw, out, draw arrows, and the size might represent the magnitude, and the direction is going to represent the direction. So here I've got you know, this little guy cruising along at 30 miles per hour, um, from the left side of the page to the right side of the page. And here, I might say this guy right here, he's not just going 30 miles per hour, but maybe he's going 60 miles per hour. So I would draw the vector associated with him to be roughly about twice as long as the one going with, or the one that's represented by 30 miles per hour. And because this is such an important concept, I'm going to say it again. When we draw an, a vector, we're going to draw an arrow the length represents the vector's magnitude, the number associated with it, and the direction, it represents the direction of the vector. You take a look at figure 110, you know, maybe it's going to have two vectors like this. These guys have the same length, so they have the same magnitude, as well as the same direction. And we could also draw two vectors with the same magnitude, but now opposite directions. Now, what would happen if I wanted to add these two vectors together? Suppose that this vector right here represented walking two kilometers to the east, and then we said, okay, I'm going to walk another two kilometers to the east, and this would be the same thing. This would be two kilometers to the east. However, this would be two kilometers in the westerly direction. What would happen if I add, wanted to add these vectors together? And obviously, you know, you can't just say both of these guys are going to be equal to four. We know that if we walk two kilometers to the east and then two kilometers to the west, we're going to end and back up where we started out. So let's take a look at adding vectors together. There's really two ways to add them together. There's the parallelogram method and the head-to-tail method. Suppose I wanted to add this vector right here to another vector, and what I would kind of do is I would say, okay, well, I'm going to take vector number one, and I'm going to just kind of lay it out there, and then at the head of vector number one, I'm going to put vector number two, and I would say that my resultant vector, that guy right there, is going to start at the tip of 1 and go to the tail of 2. So I would say that's my resultant vector. Now, direction does not matter. We could say first we're going to start off with vector 2, and then we're going to add vector 1 to it. What does the resultant vector look like? Well, it's going to look pretty much the same. We could also kind of do that you know, using what they call the parallelogram method, where we say I take vector 1, and I've got vector uh, vector 2, kind of draw that guy just like that. What I can kind of do is I can just kind of, in my head, kind of draw a little parallelogram, and then the resultant vector is going to start where they start off and go to where that parallelogram kind of intersects. If the vectors are parallel, we might, might, might say 1 and then 2, and then my resultant vector is simply going to be looking like that. And if they are anti-parallel, then it's going to, say, go off at some weird funky angle, just like that, where that's vector 1 and that's vector 2. Now, the nice thing is, is uh, we can add many, many, many vectors together, all using the head-to-tail vector. 
and as I said in the last slide, order doesn't matter. So consider these three vectors right here, a, b, and c. If I want to look at this quantity, a plus b plus c, and call that equal to r, then let's just say, hey, I'm going to start off with vector b because I want to be different. And I want to add vector a to that. And then I want to say, okay, I'm going to take vector c, and I'm going to add that guy on just like that. What does my resultant vector look like? Well, it's going to look just like that. I could probably have done it a little bit better, but I think you probably get the idea. Okay, adding is pretty easy. What happens if I wanted to subtract? So here I've got vector A, and I want to subtract vector B. Essentially, all I'm doing is I want to add a negative vector B. So here I've taken my B, and I've kind of reversed it, and now I can kind of add those guys together, and kind of my resultant might look so there's vector A, there's vector B. My resultant vector is going to kind of go off just like that. We can multiply vectors by scalars. Essentially, you know, suppose I multiply this vector A here by a scalar. Let's just say for the sake of argument that C is going to be equal to 3. If this right here is A, and I wanted to take a look at what 3A ought to look like, then kind of what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's 1A, that's 2A, that's 3A. And so my vector 3a is simply going to be 3 times as long as vector a. If you multiply it by a positive number, then it's going to go in the same direction. So you know, that might represent 3a. If you, if you represent it, or if you, if you multiply it by a negative number, then I would simply say this is going to be negative 3a. So let's take a look at a very simple example of this. Suppose I tell you that here I am, and I decide that I'm going to walk due east, or due north, for one kilometer. So I'll go ahead and draw my arrow, and I'm kind of the same length as one kilometer. And then I tell you I walk due east for two kilometers. And I ask, you know, okay, well, how far away am I from my initial um, place? And what angle? does my vector r make? So kind of what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the magnitude of r and I'm looking for the angle. Actually, they use a v. So let's take a look at this. This is a right triangle. And what the Pythagorean theorem says is the magnitude of r is simply going to be the square root of the first side. I'll just call that side a for a second. So a squared plus the second side squared b. So that's going to be side a and that's going to be side b. So we go ahead and we say that it's going to be 1 squared plus 2 squared, or the square root of 5, so 2.23 kilometers. That's going to be the magnitude of r. Now, what about this angle right here? OK, thinking back to um, our old friend Sokotoa, here we know what we'd say would be the opposite side, and here would be the adjacent side. So we want to use the, tan the toa. So we would say tangent of phi is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so we would say that the angle phi is going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite side, 2 kilometers, divided by 1 kilometers. Go ahead, type that into your calculator, and we're going to come out with 63.5 degrees. Again, we're talking about a vector quantity. We have a direction, and we have a magnitude. Now, it turns out that most likely you're not going to be adding vectors graphically because, well, it's not very accurate. However, what we are going to be doing quite a bit is we're going to be breaking vectors down into their components. Let's just consider this vector A for a second. What we typically want to do is we want to work with that nice xy coordinate system where this is going to be the positive y axis and this is going to be the positive x axis. Now, it turns out that we can write this vector A as the sum of its x component, where this is kind of the projection along the x-axis, and this is its y component, and you can kind of do the, uh, the old tip-to-tail thing if you really want to, bring you know, ay over here, and here you see you have a nice right triangle, and we can say, okay, remember our old friend Sokotoa? Let's see. Here we have the um, opposite side, and here we have the adjacent side. And so we would say, OK, this vector ay, the y component, is just going to be the magnitude of a multiplied by the sine of that angle. And this vector ax is going to be the magnitude of a multiplied by the cosine of that angle.
one thing we have to pay you know, very close attention to is going to be um, direction. Kind of think about this vector that I've drawn right here. And I tell you that it's got some angle. And we say, hey, we want to break it down into its components. And it's going to say that this is vector a for a second. So this is going to be ax. And kind of that vector right there, kind of translated over here, it's going to be ay. Keep in mind here that this is going to be in the positive y direction. AX is going to be in the negative x direction, so AX is actually going to be negative. Take a look at this vector right here, and you know, we break it down into its components. So AY and AX. In this case right here, both AX and AY would be negative, because very typically we say this is going to be the positive x-axis, and this is going to be the positive y-axis. Now when we add vectors together, we can say, okay, suppose I got this vector A and I want to add B to it, and you know, before I know I can do that, the, the tail to tip method, my resultant vector is going to kind of go like somewhere in that direction right there. Well, let me just for a second say I'm going to break A down into its components, so AX and AY, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to kind of drop B down and break it, it into its components, so BX and BY. Well, you can kind of see that the resultant is going to be just the sum of the result in the x direction, simply going to be the sum of the components in the x direction. And the result in, in the y direction is just going to be the sum of the components. And then we can kind of do the same thing we did, did before, say, you know, the magnitude of the resultant is going to be the square root of the resultant in the x squared plus the resultant in the y, y squared. And do the same thing with the angle. So when you add vectors together, you add their components together. So let's work a really quick example. So here I've got some vector A that's you know 10, a, 10 units. I've got B that, that's 5 units, and C with also 5 units, but a different direction. And I say, OK, let me go ahead, and I want to add these guys together to get my resultant vector. First thing I want to do is break A down into its components. So here I have AX, and over here I'm going to have a y. You can also draw it right over here if you, if you prefer. Okay, a x is on the um, adjacent side. So adjacent side is going to be magnitude of a multiplied by cosine of theta. So it would be 10 cosine of 30. Let's take a look at a y. That's going to be a sine theta. So that's going to be 10 sine 30. Now let's just go ahead and do, and do these real quick. That's going to be equal to 5 and 8.6. Let's take a look at B. There's no components along the x direction. There's only y components. So 0 and plus 5. Now let's take a look at C. There's nothing along the y direction. So got that guy right here. Now this component is in the negative x direction. Very, very, very important. So I'm going to write a negative 5 right there. And I want to sum those guys up to get my resultant in the x and my resultant in the y, which is going to give me 3.6 and then 10. And then you can kind of work your way through that and say the magnitude of the resultant vector is going to be equal to the square root of 3.6 squared plus 10 squared, which is going to be equal to 10.6 units, and kind of what we're looking at here is we're looking at Rx and Ry, if you will. And then you would do, you know, that the angle is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of Ry divided by Rx, which is going to run you about 70 degrees off of the positive x-axis. Now, a couple slides ago, I told you how can we can express a vector in, in terms of a, a sum of its components, but I didn't tell you how we can um, you know, actually go ahead and write that down with some physical meaning to that. To do that, we need to introduce something called unit vectors, which is essentially a vector that is along the x, y, or possibly z axis, and it has a magnitude, a length of 1, and no units associated with that. For the x and y planes, we would say that this vector is represented by what we would call an i hat and a j hat, just a vector pointing along the x and y um, axes respectively with a length of 1. Now when we had this vector a and I said we can express it as the sum of its components, all we have to do is say, okay, I have a vector of length 1, 
I'm going to multiply it by the length of the x component or the length of the y component. And now I have a way of expressing this vector a as saying it's going to be the sum of its x component in the i hat direction and its y component in the j hat direction. Now, of course, we do live in a physical universe where there are three dimensions. So we, would, we, can, we can have the x direction represented by an i hat. We have the y direction represented by a j hat. And when we consider the third dimension, that's also known as the z direction or the z direction. And the unit vector is a k hat. Again, length of 1, no units associated with that. Occasionally, you may read a book or something where um, they use x hat, y hat, or z hat. That is also valid, but the i, j, and k tend to be more traditional. Now we've talked about adding vectors. Let's talk about multiplying vectors together. It turns out there's two ways you can do that. First, there's going to be a way where you multiply two vectors together and you get a scalar. And then there's going to be a way where you can multiply them together and get a vector. So the first one is called the scalar product, also known as the dot product. And the physical meaning for this will become evident in the course. Essentially, we would say we multiply two vectors together. A dot with B is simply going to be equal to the magnitude of A. Multiplied by, multiplied by the magnitude of b, multiplied by cosine of the angle that is in between them. Now, let's just talk about the physical meaning for a little bit. Suppose I'm dragging, say, a box across the floor, and it's going in that direction right there, but I'm pulling it in this direction right here. Now, the amount of work that was done, it doesn't care about the fact that I'm pulling up. Really, it only cares about this kind of little shadow right here, how much work or how much force was applied in the direction of motion. And the dot product kind of reflects that. Suppose you don't really know um, the magnitude of the vectors or the angle between them, but you know you know them in component form. Then you would simply say that a dotted with b is going to be the magnitude of a in the x direction multiplied by the magnitude of b in the x direction plus the y direction plus the z direction. And I'm not going to belabor the point, but example 110 shows you an example of this. The next or last way is called the vector product, in which case we multiply two vectors together and we get a vector out of them. And essentially what we can do is we can say, okay, let's figure out the magnitude. That's simply going to be, we're going to take the vector A, we're going to cross it with B, cross being this little x right there. And the magnitude is simply going to be the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by the sine of the angle in between them. And to get the direction, what we're going to do is we're going to, going to say, OK, well, take a look at vector A right here. Take a look at vector B right there. We're going to take our fingers and we're going to stretch them out. We're going to point them in the direction of, of A. And we're going to curl them towards their palm into the direction of B. Now let's take a look at the direction that our thumb points. Our thumb points in the upwards direction. And so it's going to point in a direction orthogonal to both A and to B. And it's going to point in the upwards direction. So the direction of A crossed with B is going to be in the upwards direction, the direction that our thumb points. There's also a way to do this using matrix, matrices and determinants. But since you're going to forget this before we actually use it in Physics 242, I'll let you wait for my video lecture capture on how to do that.